G'day guys and welcome to our lesson on the right hand grip rule. The right hand grip rule basically relates electricity, which is the flow of charge, to magnetism. So in the first video we did on magnetism, everything was quite basic. We had these bar magnets here with a north and a south pole and they were producing these magnetic field lines which describe the direction the north pole of a compass would face and they're not allowed to cross so excuse that error there. It gets more complicated when you bring in not a bar magnet but a moving charge because a moving charge like a moving electron or a moving proton generates an electric field and this shape of the electric field it generates is at right angles to the motion of that charge. So let me show you what I mean. We describe the movement of charge always in, in terms of the movement of positive charge. So there's a positive charge moving to the right at some velocity. This will be generating a magnetic field. And the magnetic field, I'll, I'll sketch it quickly, will look like this. Coming out into the foreground here and then going behind like that in that direction. So loops, almost like it's going through a tunnel of loops. You can determine the direction of the magnetic field using this right hand grip rule. And it's quite easy. All you've got to do is put your thumb in the direction of current like that. So you've got your thumb in the direction of current of your right hand and then your fingers you curl them around like you're holding on to the, a wire like that and the curl of your fingers so the palm is in here uh, the tips of the fingers are here the direction the fingers are curling shows you the direction of the ma magnetic field so in the first lesson I said might have been the second lesson. But when magnetic fields come out of the page, they look like this. Into the page, they look like this. And across the page, we just use arrows. So if the fingers are curling towards us here, it means the magnetic field is coming out of the page above the wire. Now imagine this hand rotates towards us. By the time the fingers have rotated around there, they will be pointing in the opposite direction, provided you're, you are using your right hand. So that tells us the magnetic field is into the page here. Now I'm going to come out of the plane of the page to draw the next part. If these fingers just rotate to here, they will now be pointing in this direction here. And if this hand were to rotate backwards, the other way, they'd be pointing up into the air. So in the foreground they're going down, in the background they're going up and that confirms our idea before that it's these big loops like this. Of course this part of the loop is in the background. The same goes for a wire and it's actually easier with a wire because the charges are restricted in their movement. They can only really move along the wire. So if I replace this positive charge and I just said there's a wire, a metal wire, and we'll say the electrons are moving in that direction. That means the positive charge is conventionally moving in this direction. So we point our thumb in the direction the positive charges are moving, and you can see around this wire there must be these concentric loops. And of course those concentric loops, they're just magnetic field lines. They indicate that if you were to put a compass in the foreground here, the needle would point down because that's the direction our fingers up here, whoops, our fingers point if you curl them around to that position. Since we've just looked at a wire and we know we can bend wires into interesting shapes, what would happen if we created a circular wire? Say the electrons are flowing anti-clockwise 
that means the positive charge is flowing clockwise. So we can use the right hand grip rule. Thumb along the wire, the direction of the positive charge flow. Palm is up there. fingers curling around. It looks like the magnetic field is coming out of the page out here. And it'll be, if we slide this hand around, we'll see the magnetic field is coming out of the page all the way around this loop here. If we then rotate this hand around, how would that look? I'll try to sketch that. So, thumb still in this direction wrist there, hand here, knuckles there. Our fingers are now pointing into the page like that. So all, and if we slide this hand around we'll find the same goes anywhere along. All inside this loop, sorry I'll get rid of these positive signs, they're rather confusing. All inside the loop the magnetic field lines are going into the page. Furthermore, since the Y is bent around like this, it's almost crowding the magnetic field lines inside this loop here. So what we have is actually a lot stronger magnetic field inside the loop than outside. So in this way, having a loop of wire, you can create a strong magnetic field within in a uniform direction and a magnetic field outside also in a uniform direction. We can create, this is called a loop, but we can create what we call a solenoid by putting a bunch of loops together. So we'll say this is in the foreground and then this yellow part of the wire is in the background then coming out into the foreground again then into the background, then into the foreground, and I'll continue on in blue, but you get the idea. If we continue these loops like this, and then end them, and then run a current through the loop in that direction there. The current is going up in the foreground here, and then down in the background there. Up in the foreground, in all cases, Getting that right, yep. And down in the background in all cases. And that last one is the background there. Now this loop over here, if this is the foreground and you put your thumb in the direction of the current, you'll find that through the core of this loop here, so I'll draw the core, we find the magnetic field flows in this direction. The same goes for any loop along here. If you put your thumb in the direction of the current and curl your fingers around, you'll find the magnetic field flows that way. So all through the core of this solenoid, this collection of loops, the magnetic field is flowing like that. And along the outside, if you're coming to the top here and you put your thumb in the direction of the current which is sort of going into the page there, the magnetic field will be going this way on the outside. And this is starting to actually resemble a magnet because the field lines will actually do this. Also notice how they get closer together inside than out, which is supporting the idea the magnetic field is stronger within the solenoid than outside. Since the magnetic field lines have this configuration, they behave as though the solenoid has a north pole here and a south pole there. 
So in Breaking Bad, they use an electromagnet to destroy the information on a hard drive. And the electromagnet basically works like this. It's a number of coils that if you run current through, you hope to get a lot of magnetic field lines. Walter White, the protagonist slash antagonist in the series, wants to generate a huge amount of magnetic field. To do that, he hooks up 42 car batteries, all pumping current through this wire. So he generates a huge amount of current in the wire here, which makes a huge amount of magnetic field around the solenoid, which is enough, he hopes, to pass through the wall of the evidence locker, uh, through the laptop and into the hard drive, to change the little information domain to the hard drive which are magnetic themselves and scramble them in the direction of this magnet to destroy the evidence. So to summarize there, a moving charge generates a magnetic field. The direction of the magnetic field, uh, the lines of the magnetic field can be found by using the right hand grip rule, which is where you put your thumb in the direction of the current, your finger, and your fingers will show you the direction of the magnetic field lines your thumb should always point in the direction of the positive current. If it's a negative charge, put your thumb opposite to the direction of the motion of the negative charge because that is the flow of positive current. Notice also when you bend that wire or you put the charges into a circular motion, you get a uniform direction inside the loop. And if you put the loops together like this, you get a solenoid, otherwise known as an electro magnet because it does behave like it has these north and south poles.